All right, guys. Um, I don't have much of an intro other than uh, my name starts 1K for you guys that don't know me or might be new. Um, I like to kind of do these uh, lectures on stop loss and take profit. Um, day after day, week after week, I see people kind of wanting to take profit or sell at random percents. I kind of just want to show you some examples on either, you know, how you can let your winners win or how or know when to cut because you don't want to use the random percent stop loss on calls. And we have a small wick down, they buy it back up only to, you know, go flying. You say, oh man, they stopped me out, you know? So kind of the point of today, and, you know, I'm going to do these bi-weekly, um, show you some levels and show you how to guys use the options chart, the options price chart, if you guys are not doing that already. Um, Cause it's really important because I've had a few DMs and a, you know, a few people, even on trade floor, someone said, you know, can I just enter a trade and, and turn on a 5% stop loss? So like, that's a surefire way to get stopped out of every single trade, 5%. Like you get in Tesla or NVIDIA, 5% stop loss, you're going to get stopped out every single time. Um, so, and I see other comments of, you know, kind of buy and set a 20% stop and 20% profit. Well, yes and no, you know, but you're going to leave a lot on the table and it's also, you know, to me, that's not really trading. You're kind of saying you're in a trade, walking away, you're not putting work in. And you guys got to kind of enjoy this, enjoy what you do. Um, you know, if you're not enjoying trading, then this is, it's going to be a chore every day and it should not be. It should be, it should be fun and your reward is making some money. Um, let's see, um, before I enter any trade, um, even if it's my own trade or an alert, um, I immediately... I'm kind of going to the one hour and I'm seeing um, where we are in the chart. This fly is a little messy. Sorry, guys. Um, I always see where we're on the chart. You know, I don't want to just blindly enter something and not know where my levels are. So when I, when I get ready to enter any trade, I find if I'm in calls, um, your take profit zones can be pre-market high, um, opening range test, high of day retest, uh, previous day high, you know, or the opposite if you're in puts, you know, your, your key zones you want to look for is a pre-market low test, uh, low a day. Um, I have example of that today um, from one of Nando's trades. Previous low, um, and and to me, you know, I don't focus on the percent. You know, I, I try and have a stop out zone, a hard stop, and I have two or three take profit levels. So, um, I'm going to go over a couple trades. I'm, I don't want to spend too much time. I want to make this for you guys, but um, I'm going to go over a couple trades. Um, they do got to be a screenshot because once the contract is expired, Weeple does not let you pull it up. So um, this is from last week. All credit goes to flips. Um, this was one of his NVIDIA. So to look and kind of see where we're at, um, let me look at my notes here. November 30th. So I'll kind of walk you through what I think he was looking at and why and why it makes it a very low risk, easy trade. All right. So this is the zone we're going to focus, this green zone right here. So this to me is a super, super low risk trade for puts. So he learned some puts. Um, I'll go back to the option chart in a second. But what I imagine what he's looking at is let's focus on this day right here is we have a bounce zone, push up, reject, bounce, push up, reject. We come down, we slice through this for the first time in, you know, one, two, three, four days. So when we slice through this, I bet his focus is let's look for a push and a retest. Um, and now if we take a look at so this is a zoomed in version of what I just showed you guys here. So this is that line that was the previous bounce zone. So he, he entered and I entered with them. So this is the options chart. This is a 470 put here. Um, so this zone on the price of NVIDIA is this right here. So this is a put. When it goes down, your contract goes up. So kind of work your brain when you're looking at this chart. This is the price options chart. So I entered, I don't know the exact spot, but I know I entered here because I was in voice chat with them. He entered here and he said something, you know, break over VWAP, it's invalidated. So what we did 
is this line right here is this line right here. So we enter puts here. We know if we break and hold over here, it's invalidated. So we risk roughly, it's probably 3, 330 or 340, 350. And you have about a 20 to $30 risk on a loss. Does that make sense everybody? So if it breaks above this, this is invalidated. And you look, I had a key zone here marked here and here. And this is a really good trade that kind of is a little too perfect because it worked out really, really well. So we entered here sometime around 350 bucks. And I sold one here, one here, and my runner here. And this is the day I think NVIDIA just, um, oh, I gotta get out of annotations. I think this is the day that it kept fading all day. You know, obviously you can say you left a lot on the table, but the point of this is, I didn't care what the percent was here. I knew that when I entered around here, I first price target, second and third, and just worked out really, really perfect. And so first zone here, big candle here is this, and this last zone was somewhere down around here. So that's why you guys need to, when you enter here, we'll just call it 350. When you enter here, you cannot say 20% stop. I mean, if you know what 20% of $350 is, that's fine. But you guys need to stop on levels. You need to say, if I enter here and we push up, am I okay to risk, you know, 350 minus, you know, we'll just call this maybe 320. You have to ask yourself, can I risk $30 per contract that I'm in to say that I'm wrong right here? And I was willing to do that. I say, if we push up, that's a $30 loss, but look at my reward, 350 entry over 500. I didn't know it was gonna go to here, but this is the mindset you guys need to have is, where is my stop and how much? You know, NVIDIA moves fast. It's a big money player. Same with Tesla. You guys are diving into Tesla and you guys have no idea. If you get into calls, let's say you get into calls here and you take this candle down, you guys have no idea what you're risking without a stop loss on what that would mean. Like, you know, that's, uh, that's this candle here, you know, 340 to, well, let's call it 440. That's a hundred dollar drop per contract. If you were in calls there, like you guys have to ask yourself, can I take that risk? And so the point is you need to enter where it's very, very easy. Um, Damn these fucking annotations. Well, I guess we're wrong with that. <laughs> you guys need to enter. Um, there we go. Where it's very obvious that if it pushes against you, you're wrong. There's, there's no guessing here. If they reclaim this support that they've held for three or four days, this is an obvious I'm wrong on puts. So. That, I assume, was the mentality of Flips's play. Like I said, credit to him. He's the one who took it. Um, would you let it fight a little if it broke the VWAP and get out immediately? Um, man, why can I not? What is going on here? There we go. There we go. Uh, what day is this? 11.30. Yeah, so normally, you know, we try and say, you know, wait on, wait on candle closes. Um, you know, if you're seeing, to me, I trade on the 15 minutes. So there's times where it pushes, but that's what big money wants to do is they want it. They know where stops are sitting. They they know that most people say, you know what? If it pushes to VWAP, it's going to stop people out. So you got to have a little bit of wiggle room, but... If this launches and fills up here or just flies up here, you got to accept you're wrong. And maybe they wick you out and they come back down. Just look for a re-entry, uh, Josh. Look for a re-entry here. Um, I got a good example of that actually on Tesla. Um, we'll go over that since you kind of asked about that. So Tesla was a losing trade for me. 
this was yesterday. This is the chart, um, a larger view. This is a zoomed in view. So um, turn these on again, see if I can't screw this up. So I got in right around here, calls. I got calls right around here. And I, I knew I had this risk here, you know, so I, I bought here. I knew I had this risk overhead, but I, I said to myself, you know what? I think at 240 is a big level. I think we might push to there. And that was kind of my profit zone for, you know, take profit here, take profit here. I knew that was my risk. So I entered around 380 or 382. And you can see it chopped for about five or 10 minutes. I got this kill candle right here. But my stop, my stop was this, was this wick right here. So my stop was about 365. And so I knew that if it came down here, obviously think think guys had that stop loss. And of course it sold and pushed back up my zone. But like that's an example of just, you know, when you're wrong, you're wrong. Like I I knew the risk of this overhead, this previous low, but uh we reclaimed, you know, I thought we were gonna get that nine and twenty one crossover. You know, obviously it failed, but you know that's just you know, that's a risk you take. That was a losing trade I took. Um, but, you know, it happens, you know, like that's why you have stop losses. And that's why I said, you know what, if we close at or below this candle, I'm out. And so like I said, my entry is roughly 382 and I had a 365. So, you know, almost a $20 loss per contract on that. Um, it happens. Um, like I said, you're not going to win all of them, but yeah. I want to go over one more that I like here. Um, QQQ. Um, I think this is a little better example. Yeah. QQQ on 12 4. This is from last week. Um, and again, I hate saying it's easy, but. This is the stuff you guys want to look for when you're patient. Stuff like this will be easier to you. So this is the zone we're looking at right here. Um, uh, we'll just leave it red for now. Um, 12 dash, 12 four. Man, where is the search function on this shit? All right, same concept as that NVIDIA trade. This was green. We'll call us demand, whatever you want to call it. Uh, so if it breaks and close above. Um, space, that's that's kind of up to you. It's it's whatever risk you want to take. For me, uh, I think you're referring to that uh, other trade. But if it would have broke over VWAP, like, and support on that NVIDIA, like to me, that means I'm wrong and, and buyers are taking over again. Um, this one is kind of the same concept. So you sell down, you, and we're on the 30 minute time zone here, guys. So this is your 30 minute time zone confirmation. So we sold, we bounced, we sold, we bounced. We sold, we sold through. And you hear flips say it, you hear rivers say it, um, break and retest. So that can be, um, you know, calls or puts, you can have a breakout and a retest for calls or on puts, you can have a sell down retest and puts. So that's what this is right here. Let's focus on this section right here. I'm gonna turn it back red so it's not confusing for you guys. And why trades like this are easy where you can, you can short um, the retrace back up. So that is this section right here. This is my runner, just an example for you guys. So again, this section down here, this zone right here is this zone. So yes, we're above VWAP 9 EMA, 21 EMA, but we're coming back up to that zone that was that hard slice through. So I entered, obviously can see a buck 49, I entered and I, I seen some red, I'm not gonna lie. So I entered somewhere about right here. It might've been this candle. And I said, you know, this is the five minutes. I said, let's see where these 15 minute candle closes. Um, if we 
you know, this probably or could have been a close 149 to, you know, 144. I'm risking five to 15 bucks up here for possible reward down here. So again, you have to look at trades and go, if this is against me, how bad is it going to be and how quick do I know? So I'm risking 15 to 20 dollars for a downside move here. Um, you know, 30 to 40 dollars, we'll say. I didn't know it was gonna it was gonna do this. And again, I trimmed heavy hair VWAP and I trimmed no. 178. So I trimmed somewhere right here on this candle. I wasn't going to wait for this on this runner. Like that's good money when you're shorting a retracement. Um, and again, I don't know and I don't care what percent these are. What I want to do, I want to know when it makes sense to stop out. And that's what I did there. Um, did I enter in the middle? I don't have the timestamp on this one, so I don't know exactly, but um, you know, 149, if you draw a line straight over here. So I probably entered pretty much right at this and I saw some red. Another thing I do guys, you know, this was on uh, December 4th. My contract is December 5th. So I usually buy one to two to three days expiration. So a zero DTE, this would have stopped me out for sure. But you buy, you know, even if you're looking for this move, you can buy a week time because that when you buy longer dated, that is that is your safety net. That's your safety net to say, hey, I can be wrong for 5, 10, 15, 20 minutes, but as long as it doesn't break above, I'm okay. But if if you're in a zero DT and you're holding through all this, like that is risky. That is risky. All right. I don't want to go through too many because we're halfway through the lecture. Um, does anybody have questions on you know kind of what I'm saying? why I'm saying it. Um, is it making sense to everybody? Um, let's see. Let's see a couple of questions. All right, let's see here. Everyone's good. Um, does anybody have a losing trade? Um, you can be brave. Does anybody have a losing trade that you want to go over? Josh says, my biggest issue is holding through my targets fully. Any advice? Um, it happens to us all, still happens to me. I think what is the most struggle for most people, Josh, is um, pain, mental pain, I guess we'll call it from previous losses. It can be a current losing streak or it can be your all time PL. Could be one because you're like, you want to be so quick to secure, you don't want to be red again. Or the trade was green, break even, deep red, and now. You know, you held through 40% red and now it's green 15 and now you go, okay, I got, I got to sell, I got to sell, I got to sell because I don't want to go red again. And so I think it boils down to the mental game, but also like, like I said, I, when I'm in a trade and even before, like I rely heavily on the 30 minute and the one hour that does my heavy lifting for me. I don't, I don't care what this is doing on the one minute. I'm looking to larger time frames to say, you know what, look at this. This is the 30 minute time frame. Look at this 30 minute right here. Bears are complete control on that engulfing right there in that 30 minute. And so longer time frame, big levels is your confirmation to give you confidence. Um, same here. I get scared when I see red, I just take it out. So if you're scared, you're probably in too heavy. Um, because I say to myself, if I'm in a contract and it costs $5, not 500, literally $5. Am I scared? No. Am I if am I in a play and I'm in fifteen thousand dollars? Yeah, my palms might be sweaty. So, Elijah, you're either scared because you're probably in heavy, or maybe you chased. You know, maybe we sold down here and you're buying puts at support. So, you know, patience and and confidence is going to give you the key to what you want to do. Um. Oh, what's up, Flips? How you doing, man? Let me make you co-host in case you want to chat. What's good, my boss? How you doing? What's up, man? Yeah, we're just going over uh, take profit levels. I went over your NVIDIA from last week, actually, man. It was good. Um, just trying to get some brave people here to see if they want to maybe talk about a trade they'd lost on. Um, Kevin, do you want to talk about your, 
your loss today or not so much? All right. Go ahead and unmute yourself, Kevin. Uh, let me know what you got. I'll pull the contract up and uh, yeah, man, feel free to unmute yourself. We can talk it over. I think you should have a permissions to unmute. All right, hold on. So what's what's the topic that that you that you covering? What's going on? Um, yeah. So basically, take profit um, flips. Just take profit on levels um, and not percent wise. We went over. I don't know if you remember this one from last week. Remember that break and retest from Nvidia that we took? Yeah, um, yeah. yeah. That was last week, but um, I kind of went over just saying, you know, don't you know our entry was somewhere around here around three forty, three eighty, or three forty, three thirty five. Don't stop base basically make make levels in the zone stop you out basically not like a random 10% stop basically and then use key levels you know when you say hey I'm trimming based on target levels not percent gains not oh I'm selling because I'm 20% I'm selling because this is a support this is a support this is support and so I'm trying to get people to you know not think about the percent gains or losses um and kind of just risk reward on you know, when you entered here, it's like our risk was freaking really small, you know. Um, but, yeah, if you want to jump on anything, Flips. I'm, I'm back. I don't know if you can hear me. Yeah, Kevin, what's up, man? All right. What yeah, you got? Go over that uh, trade I took today on, on SPX. SPX. All right, man. So I was watching I was watching Spy, like, on the one hour. Okay. So, and that's what I was using to try to kind of trade spx i'm kind of toggling back and forth on my phone but i had so like okay. on, on the one hour i went back you know let's see my spies gonna be know, ugly, one, two, yeah, we'll go over it. yeah i went back one two three four five six seven eight nine like like nine or ten days you know you had that mm -hmm. kind of high where it kind of spiked up there to like four spiked up there to like 460 or something and it kind of broke back down and then right. like Around three or four maybe. days ago it's spiked back up to like 460 and a half or so okay right so i kind of drew a line there right from okay. that from that high to that high i kind of drew a trend line right from that the high about five or six days ago from 460 here you might have to zoom back out a little bit further all right this guy uh 12 yeah, was, yeah back there yeah it was back it was back there like five or six days but i don't have chart layers so it's a little necessary guys um, yeah keep going back a little further a little more. All right. Yeah, that a little bit further, a little bit further. Yeah, there. See that big spike right there? Yep. Okay. Yeah. So I, I drew a trend line from that big spike kind of to this other big spike like three days ago. Right. This guy? Yeah, three days ago. And I drew a trend line kind of out through there. But on mine, it kind of it, it kind of had the opening today dropping below that trend line. Yep. So okay. on the one hour, like on my chart, the way I had it drawn, mm -hmm. the one hour had kind of dropped below that trend line. And again, yours, yep. it's it's kind of, it's kind of, you see that wick right there? Right there. Yep. Right, yeah. So I took I took puts right there because, you know, the, the CPI data was kind of flat. We uh -huh. were kind of dropping below there. So I took, you know, SPX puts as we were dropping below that one hour trend line. And I might have been up a few cents higher, you know, because we were we were slightly below that that one hour trend line. So I okay. took SPX puts there at, I don't know, it was like 140 or something like that. And, okay. you know, SPX moves pretty fast. I had like, I don't know, five or I had like five of them or something at like 140, you know, and they went down to 100 pretty quick because it bounced up after yeah. above that one hour trend line. And boom, I was out, you know, I was out at like 110, you know, mm -hmm. but I, but, hey, it was an L, you know, it was, it was like a $200 loss for me, but yep. it was, and it, probably you know, first, that was my trade today, plan. Probably. My trade, first trade of the day right but yep. my trade plan was hey if it's below this you know cpi data was flat we were selling off a lot mm -hmm. of stuff was selling off but that was my trend line that i was watching and it was opening below that trend line so i took the puts but we bounced above that trend line i had to take the l i mean i yep. you know in the past i would have averaged down average down average down and been a four thousand dollar loss for the day 
And that's yep. not good trading. You know, that's dumb. No. Nope. Right. So I was, I was glad that I had a $200 or $240 loss or whatever it was mm -hmm. because we were it, it open a little the trend line. Though, doesn't it? Like that small yeah. loss compared to poor. Yeah. $240 yeah. loss is way better than, than a big loss. Yep. So then, you know, relook at the day and, you know, spy ends up running. You know, had had we come back down below that trend line, I would, probably would have got back into puts. But we never came back down that trend line. We we ran up all day. Ended up playing QQQ the rest of the day because of some other trend lines I was watching on the queues. Ended up making like fourteen hundred bucks for the day. Mm -hmm. But again, had I had I fought that that loss and tried to make that loss a win and and played the hopium and and just believe, just believe and try to try to get that to come back, that would have been ugly. You know. Yep. Yeah, and especially at the, at the opening, it's like, I don't know how often you play the opener if you're good at it, but it's like, you got to be right and right quick and, you know, right on the money. So, quick. you know, you entered, you know, somewhere around here. Yeah, you kind of maybe chase, but it's like, you knew right away you're wrong. And, and to me, I, I think that's the best thing you could have done. Um, you know, it's it's hard at the open. You can, you know, when the opening candle slices the pre-market low, it's like, okay, where do we go from here? Um I think flips not even called these, but you know, the best thing to do, you know, I don't know. It sounds like you, you're pretty good at charting. So always just kind of look left and see, you know, where we are. We, we bought, you know, it sold right kind of in this little pocket here. Um, and you got, you got to be thinking bouncy there, bouncy there, you know? And so, and it's tough when we got kind of like this zone here, it's like, that is your, that's, that's your risk to be buying puts right there. Like, unless we clear, I don't know, man, like maybe it's tough because there's all this back and forth action here to, to take puts on something like that. And obviously we're in an uptrend, but it's like, you know, it's, you want to clear either like a previous day zone, like which, you know, we, we cleared this little zone here, but we sliced through that, you know, so it's, you know, and, and for me, you know, but you took and for me five there. and for me, five, six contracts, that's a smaller position for me. You know, that it was a, it was a, you know, data, seeing some red in the, you know, a lot of things open in red. I was like, Hey, let me just see if we, if we pull back, you know, right. Like I was looking for more of a pullback to the 460 range before a bounce, you know? Mm -hmm. Yep. But, uh, that, we bounced. You know, I don't know that candle just the 460. it all up. It's like shit, man. And so, um, yeah, mentally we're able to just shake it off and get back in something. You said you finished green. You said, yeah. right. Yeah. Finish 1400 green for the day. So hell yeah. So you can't, you can't chase a losing trade. You just like I said, nope. You have to you have to know that if you're in the wrong trade, you got to get out of it, you know, and you got to get out of it with a small loss. You can't get out of it with a big loss. Yep, for sure, for sure. Cool, so you man. were asking for an example of a of a trade somebody took with an L. Not that was a tr you know trade I took with an L, but a like, small L. That's all right, man. I, I Zabe or uh, Zabe's uh, Tesla took me for my money yesterday. So um, anybody else got a winner or loser they want to go over? Anybody, anybody, anybody? Lambos, did you hit anything today? I know you're uh I don't even have to ask you what you took. You probably took SPX. Lambos, go ahead and unmute, man. I already know it's SPX. I don't even have to ask you. Yo. What's up, brother? <clears throat> It was the end of the day. SPX right around like the two thirty mark. Uh, two thirty market time. Yeah, Eastern. Twelve. So like fourteen. So oh, yeah. eleven thirty for me. So somewhere 14. around here. This is spy. Is that all right? Yeah. yeah so somewhere in this zone. Uh, eleven. Yeah. Let me let me pull my actual fill. Okay. Two thirty is eleven thirty for me. So somewhere around this guy. Yeah, fourteen thirty one. And uh, what contract strike do you remember? Uh, 40, 40, 40, so that's... You're cutting out, man. I'm sorry. I don't know if it's your mic or mine. Probably 463 or so, maybe 462. I was in. No, you're sorry, 4640. I thought you were watching. I thought you would pull up my chart. Yeah, it's 460. Oh, 4640. So you pull up that con chart there. Uh, so if you look, 
Okay, so if we go right to the end of day, so that would be what's that fourteen thirty one? That's Wait, am I in the right thing here? All right, let's see here. Yeah, you're there. Okay. Yeah, so if you were to like right there at the bottom, so right there where um so what I like to so to give everybody kind of what I do is I'll I watch by SPX, QQQ and ES. So mm -hmm. So what I like to do is I've been I'll I'll pick a couple contracts you know that are some volume leaders and I've noticed that on all these dips um you can go through and check the cons from you know twenty up that every dip the cons are getting added like if you see that big volume spike there at twelve like mm -hmm. all the spikes like everybody was just loading 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 and you see where the premium bottom bottom out at fifty five mm -hmm. and then <clears throat> if you look where your EMA is I'm assuming Assuming, what's your purple line right there? Purple's the nine. Okay, so you look at spy. You see, you see spy just running the nine, running the nine, running the nine. Yep. And you see that. So what I'm watching for when I go and I pick a contract is if the volume is increasing in the contract, even though the volume's increasing, the part the the market may be moving sideways, but the volume's increasing and the contract price isn't losing much value in the chop. Mm-hmm. So, and the on these slow grinds up, you know, I don't, you know, I used to jump the gun a lot. So I used to, you know, used to always say, okay, well, eight C entry, 13, 13 EMA is the max entry. So my entry on this specific was 95. So that was my, uh, just before, yeah, literally. Right Somewhere there. in here. So yeah. one, yeah, okay. So 1135. Uh, so was it somewhere in those candles, right? I think I'm on the right spot. Yep. So okay. what I did was I watched, see those two candles right there where it, where the two wicks. And I think, I think, and you've seen them back in the previous chart where you see wick, huge candle, wick, huge candle, two wick, uh -huh. huge candle. You know, you see the tweezers and it takes off. Right. Right. So I was watching that. And I don't know what your green, what's your green line there? 21. 21. Okay. So the 21. So you see it just, it never gets a, it, every, whole day i just watched that thing just rip off the 21 rip off rip, uh -huh. off, rip off so i'm like okay this thing and on my chart i had a level on this algorithm that i use i had a level at um 46 46 31 so i was just watching that we were just chopping 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 so I'm like all right premium is already bottom here at 55 we're sideways volume is just increasing at this point i think at this point the volume was forty k, maybe fifty k. It was just you know slowly increasing, and then it was never breaking. It broke my level of forty six thirty one. It kept rejecting thirty five. So I'm like, all right, I'm going to take it. EOD. The premiums were already milked at that point. So I was right. like, all right, I'm just going to try one end a day. You know, I'm gonna I'm gonna expect a little squeezer in the, you know, Powell. Since that's all we've been doing, you zoom out thirty minute, fifteen minute. It's just been vertical so right just a, a grind all all yep. well so i mean i saw so i got in probably a couple minutes early but you, know, you got to enter on a red candle and you got to exit on the huge green candle so watch and watch and watch and it came down tagged the tag the nine again and then it was like it broke it broke the 30 it broke that 35 level mm -hmm. and it just started like we got a nice little squeezer into there so I ended up, I ended up, if you look on this premium chart, I ended up getting out. I think my exit, um, let's see here. my exit was at three nine. So 3.9. So it was 95 to three nine, which was almost the top of that. Almost the second. Yes. Yeah. So <laughs> 313 percent. Yeah. That's not, that's not bad boss. <laughs> So that and that was the only trade I took. I, mean, I just watched. I was I was busy today. I do work full time, right? Right time, Discord full time, trolling toasty, hundred percent of the time. For sure. Uh, so, but dude, yeah, we when we broke this level, like I mean, look at. I mean, obviously bulls were in control, but we break this green zone, like this little mm -hmm. pre market. And it's like, dude, we're off to the races. Like <clears throat> it's wild. I wasn't even. I wasn't trading, but dude, I had this. 464 from like you know two years ago or it had to been two years ago we haven't been here mm -hmm. since two years ago and it's like it's crazy how levels still work 
you know, two years later. And so that's why, yeah, man, I don't so they, care. That shit's ugly. But you know what? I'm not focusing on that. I'm looking right here. Like, I don't have to chart spy ever again until we mm -hmm. make new all-time highs, like, you know? Yeah. But, and if you look at, I know, I know there's people in here that probably hate it, but I do have like the, it was like the Rips 3 MA clouds. Uh-huh. And that thing never even broke. I I ride the 8, 13, 21, 48. That's what I run. And nice. then my high 13 and 48 is what I keep highlighted. Mm -hmm. And all day on the 15 minute, we never even broke under. We kind of broke the 8, touched the 13, and whipped off the 13. So yep. it's at that, you know, at that point, once those flip and you just see that, like, it's just, it's just been by the dip. And if you look back and zoom back like the last couple of days, what what folks will notice or would take notice if you'll see that big dip and then you'll see the rip and then it just trends. Yep. They're so just when, and they're they're just grabbing shares down here, man. Yeah. So they just they just run your stop real quick. I mean, at, at this start, we were down like 13, 14 bucks. And I'm listening to flips at this point. And he's already got AMD is down like to like down a dollar forty at the open and flips is like, yeah, I'm going calls and so he was already, you know, he sniped, you know, I think he did twice. Cool. I think he did twice today. He got, he's, yeah, he's, he got yeah. like at the open, I think, and I think he got re-entry here. I remember him saying, you know, the flow's not matching. You can get out if you want. You know, if you stop out, it's like, I'm looking. I'm like, dude, it's not gonna blow past that. I'm, I wasn't doubting him. I'm looking. I'm like, dude, it's gonna. Gotta be some rejection and then just freaking moon to 140. So I mean send it out. I I just so I like the yeah, I cry and oh man, I didn't hold for blah blah, blah. but it was 340, 320% by the time I sold. Mm -hmm. But I like to sell into the you know, into the IV pop. So oh, that you sure a little more a little IV will push the contract price up. And it's like I had another I had another level. Like I kept seeing it come back down and test, come back down and test. I mean, I was out at like when it hit thirty-seven. That was like my out point. And then we we got that one more big push over forty, right? Could, like an extra hundred, two hundred dollars. But at that point, you know, it's close to the end of the day. Zeta picked up like crazy, and little wick wiped your pot, wiped your profits out. I mean, I was happy with you know, three hundred, three hundred plus on the day. For one trade for a fifteen minute, five minute, you know. Hell yeah, dude! Nice, nice work, man. Nice work. Yeah. All right, boss. I'm gonna let someone else talk. I appreciate it, Lambos. Appreciate, appreciate it. you joining too, man. Uh, Norvin took QQQ three six at the bottom. All right, brother. Give me your trade plan on this. You can go ahead on mute if you want. Ten, nine. Hey, how's it going? What's up, brother? All right, walk me through what you did and why. Uh, so I took the three ninety six uh, QQQ. Uh, pretty much I took them at open. Okay, so down right uh, here. Yeah. What was your fill? Do yeah. you remember? Uh, it was seventy eight, and then it kind of went down a bit, and then I added two more contracts. So I was playing four contracts. Yep. And then uh. Well, pretty much I saw some big names like NVIDIA, Meta, um, you know, pretty much a, a big percentage of the NVIDIA, I mean, um, QQQ uh, top 10 uh, holdings. They're right. pretty much up a lot, you know, and um, I was holding a swing from uh, Apple. Uh, obviously, it kind of got turned down a bit, but I saw that what River told, what, what River talks about all the time, like, if you want to know what, what the chart's going to do next, then look to the left, you know? Yep. So I saw that, obviously, it went down a bit, and I mm -hmm. was like, if it doesn't break this, this level is going to pretty much pop right away, you know? Yep. This is yeah, totally, if I was in calls, this zone is 100% of what I would watch, so... I make it green. I'm not going to call it demand, but we'll call it demand. Um, yeah, Uner, Uner calls here. You know, previous day, you you have to look at, I'm not speaking to you, but I'm just saying in general, you have to look at where we're at in the previous day. So if you buy here, you know, 
if you buy somewhere around this purple line, you have to say, hey, we have this previous day support. We pushed, we held, we held, we held. If you if we hold this purple line, like damn right, you're getting calls, man. Like that is that is your buy signal. Um, they they tried to sell it down, they brought it, they bought it back up. Like that's that's a buy signal for me. Um, so where, where'd you trim at, man? Or would you would you sell? So I was holding, uh, you know how we had that first little pump and then we uh came back and consolidated and then it rallied. So I trimmed like uh right my field was 72, yeah. Okay. Uh, no, the all the way to the leg up. All the way to the top to the top candle. Here? Yeah, yeah. Around around that area. Uh I pretty much uh sold everything there. Yes, that's yeah, that's this candle right here. So this candle I pretty much sold them like at buck point seven. So it was like a pretty much thirty dollar gainer for each contract. Mm -hmm. But I mean I was happy with it. And then I was uh riding the the little uh, slow snail on uh, Apple, uh, paid me like 15 bucks or 20 bucks, something like that. Mm -hmm. But I mean, I was happy with my gains, you know, it's like, what you keep on saying on like, when you have your class, you know, it's like, don't, don't hope on hopium, you know, it's just have your trade plan. And then obviously it could run up to 500, 300%, but that's not the case. It's like, you know, you execute and you're out and then you leave green, you know? Yeah. Cause like I said, you know, for me, I wasn't in this, but say I got in around here, I'm 100% for sure taking a trim at this heavy old zone here. I've taken a trim at, well, this isn't pre-market high, but this pre-market cluster here, I would trim another one or maybe all of them. And then if we break and retest, I'm either going to get an entry here or, you know, if you enter down here and you trimmed Say you're in four of them. You trim three already. You can either hold through this and still be in profit, or you can secure all and get back in. And so that is the luxury of buying a few and trimming because you're smart. You trim, you trim, you trim. You secure profits. So even though this might retrace $30, the contract price, you already secured all the way up on this. And so that's what's important. Yeah, I mean, like a nice hundred. man. Uh, I want to get some, want to get some other people like some time to talk. Yeah, yeah, no worries. But uh, just one thing I want to add to it is just uh, you got to be quick with those same days. You know, it's like if if one candle could just ruin your whole trade. You know, if if you're not quick and you don't trim when you have the opportunity, you just get smoked. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Ooh, this is a good one. All right, thanks, man. Appreciate it. Um, All right, thanks. LaRo, hopefully I'm saying your name correct. Um, let's go over this one if you want. I never play this, but it looks like I have an old level from, I don't know when, but it's here. Um, all right, 1123 Central. Uh, let's see. LaRoe, are you still in here? Do you want to unmute? Or are you just making a comment? Let me know if you want to talk this over. Anything? Anything? Michael Work. Hmm. Can you hear me? Yep. What's up, man? Oh, uh, thanks, Zach. Cool. Uh, you entered at um, 1123. So that's uh, 9.23, I believe, my time. Yeah, you're in California? Yep. Okay. So we'll just call it this candle. So basically what I was doing was uh, I kind of have a reversal indicator. So I was kind of saying, okay, I think it's about to reverse. Mm -hmm. So I, I was just basically playing the reversal on that. Okay. So you entered 11.23, exit... An hour later, so we're all 25, 10, 25, somewhere around here. Okay. Ooh, I think I like this play already. Uh, maybe way too late to take profits. Still got 11%, though. So yeah, I think I got up to about 20%, but I didn't take it then. But I mean, that's look at, like I said, I haven't, I haven't played this forever. Like, before we even go over that, like, I'm just going to extend this here. 
So you got this little pocket here, you know, can't be greedy when we when we break down and retest, you've got to sell into this and then, yeah, kind of the same zone. So you could look at this and if we kept pushing, I would have said to myself, okay, now we got this box here. Like before, you know, before the breakout happened, you have to look at these old zones here. So um, okay. that's a good, so you, um, what, what was your, what was your indicator to tell you to buy? Like we reclaimed some MA, uh, EMAs? Yeah, or, it does, it, you see that, um, that white, uh, well, you see the, the last red candle. So it was mm -hmm. just telling me that it, it seems to be reversing. So I just kind of took a risk saying, okay, I will stop out at, maybe like five bucks or whatever. So I mm -hmm. just, and it looks like it worked a little bit, you know, so. No, that's a good play. If you're, if you're playing, like I said, the, the breakdown and retest, you always got to sell into the previous breakdown area. Right. You cannot be greedy and say, you know what, we're just going to plow right through this. Cause it's like bulls tried to hold it and bears took over. And so like when you're pushing back in here, you know, bears are going to be parked you know, sellers gonna be parked right here. You got to trim, and so, yeah, maybe it wasn't a huge percent gain, but like, I mean, look, if you would have held the whole day, it wouldn't have done a damn thing, really. And so, yeah, exactly. That's yeah. a good. That's a good trade. A good example of just sticking to your plan of, you know, maybe this, maybe going in, you knew, hey, this is gonna give me hundred percent, but it's like, again, playoff levels, and just you know, live to fight another day or get another trade. So, I like that. You know, you 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 had a plan. And he knew where to take profit. I like that. And I was, oh, thanks. And I was also using uh, volume. So I can tell that the buyers were, or the sellers were coming in. So I just, I just stopped mm. out. Brother, I'd be looking some calls. I said, I haven't played this forever, but. This man, is who's not to trade, yeah. Whatever this old line is here. Yeah, look at that. Oh, that's a nice recovery. Yeah, I would be. Yeah. Dang. Might have to put this one on the list. Yeah, this is a huge support reclaim. So man, if we we hold this, you know, on longer time frames, like I would not be bearish on this. I mean, obviously you weren't, but yeah, like try out some old levels. Like, you know, a quick chart is all these sneaky wicks here. Like look at, you know, I just I didn't even look left. I made a line here and that shit lines up like perfect. Like that's a good pocket to play in, man. Keep that on your list. Like, that's okay. a good 62 cent range you can play in right there. Like, that's nice, man. Nice work on that. Yeah, thanks. Um, anybody else? Nobody else. We got technically a few minutes, but I think I got everybody. All right, guys, if that's everything and nobody has anything else, then we will shut it down. Five seconds. Speak now or forever hold your peace. Thank you all for coming. We got 30 people in here that are smarter than they were, hopefully. Uh, Hugh, you're welcome. Glad to have you in here. Hater. Appreciate you. All right, guys, let's have a good night. Um, tomorrow's FOMC. So probably some morning action, some morning moves. And then as it comes into uh, pile speaking, there's gonna be a lot of chops. So quick word of advice. If you're new, if you're green on the week, I would sit it out or paper trade. Um, nothing worse than being up Monday and Tuesday and completely wrecking that tomorrow because you don't know what's going to happen. So uh, when Powell is on the mic, I would stay out and just watch because there's going to be more plays on Thursday and Friday. So, you know, there's likely going to be, I'm just going, I don't know what the last FMC was, but um, likely a lot of chop heading into it. So, uh, you know, trade smart guys. I don't want to see anybody blowing the port. So uh, have a good night. Yeah. What's up? Yeah, I, have a, I have a question over that uh, FOMC. What's up? Uh, so, I don't know. I, mean, I might sound like delusional or whatever, but obviously, I feel like when Powell speaks, obviously it's, a, it's just a thought, you know. I don't know what's gonna happen in reality, you know. Mm -hmm. But uh, I think uh, once that guy starts speaking, it's gonna pop, and then it's gonna dump, bro. What What's your thoughts on that? Um, I think you gotta listen to what he's saying. So there's a, we know they're they're just they're gonna pause. There's a ninety nine percent 
chance that they're holding, which means they're not cutting and they're not raising. And so they're just, they're in buy and, you know, they're just hold on the rates mode right now. Um, what was the last FOMC? Let me see here. Uh, November 1st. Um, but in the politest way, don't just assume it's going to drop. And if it drops, yeah, yeah, yeah. no one, you know, and that goes for anyone who can't see, I told you. Um, so like, last FOMC. Obviously, you like being right, you know, but like, in reality, you don't I, know what's going to happen, uh, you know? I don't even, I don't even trade FOMC. Yeah, so I think this was FOMC. Um, so look at that. Pump, 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 pump. So he did not drop it, you know, like there was some wick action here, but like I said, um, you know, just if he's hawkish, yeah, you know, the market might not like it, but don't assume just because he's talking, it's it's going to dump, but, or because we're up so high that we can't go up any higher, it's it's going to dump, like can't, can't think that way, man, it's, it's got to listen to what he's saying, or just like, honestly, I close out of everything, um, just, it's just not worth the risk, like it's, you know, I don't know. I would rather trade things I can control a little bit more. And, you know, when you're, when you're just talking, it's, I don't, there's just too much risk for me. And it's just, I like low risk stuff. And so that's kind of, you know, but yeah, that's my opinion, man. That Actually that, that's what I was going to play a low risk, like probably like two contracts and that, that that's pretty much it. But well, if you uh, yeah, if you want to, here's, here's what you do. So tomorrow, uh the minutes drop at 11 or one o'clock right or the the report so that's 10 a.m for me so at 150 or yeah one 1255 is that when it comes out i can't do the math right but i think they come out at one o'clock so you know to be you know one o'clock market time is what i'm saying so five minutes before if this is where we're at, you buy one call and you buy one put and one of them's going to pay. But, you know, that's, you can, you can strangle it if you want, but other than that, it's just, it's just a gamble, man. Um, yeah. Honestly, I was going to like, what I was going to do is uh, obviously if it's, if we're still green and then before we, before he talks, it's still green. I'll probably get a little pop. And then, uh, well, that's just me. You know, I'm just, that that's just my opinion, you know? And I may I might be wrong, you know, but I was thinking of playing the 394, 395s uh Q put. Yep. Yeah, and they're just like see where at because we can we've trended all day into an FOMC and we've we've chopped sideways into an FOMC. So it just I don't know, man. To me, I'll just watch the fireworks for 30 minutes and let everybody else cheer if they make money, but I'll just uh you know try and do the day trade in the morning and then I'll just come back Thursday because yeah, dude. All right. All right. Thanks, man. All right, man. Have a good night, everybody. I'm going to end this chat and uh, let's have a good, good day tomorrow.